No, sir. I didn't like it. The Lord of the Rings is a book series that I have read more times than I have been able to keep track of in my life, and I believe that the Lord of the Rings film trilogy is not only an outstanding film series in its own right, but also the best adaptation of that great book series that could possibly have been made on film. But The Hobbit was never as interesting for me. I had only read it three times before learning of these new films. I actually reread it again in preparation for this one, but that turned out to be completely pointless because for all that these movies are entitled The Hobbit, there's scarcely any Hobbit to be found in them. What I should have done instead was watch An Unexpected Journey again because I couldn't remember for the life of me what the fuck the orcs were chasing anyone in this film for, but I was so thoroughly underwhelmed by an unexpected journey that the prospect of watching it again was like asking me to watch my soup cool. In fairness to that underwhelming film, however, it at least presented itself as a new film distinct from the Lord of the Rings films and bore some resemblance in parts to a Hobbit movie. It did have the nasty habit of flip-flopping between the tone of The Hobbit and the tone of The Lord of the Rings films. This film, however, totally commits to a tone that couldn't be more antithetical to The Hobbit. You'll notice that with The Hobbit, The Desolation of Smog, we have both The Hobbit and Smog in the title, yet there's a precious little of either of them to be found here. What we do have is a film that is far more interested in reminding you of the Lord of the Rings movies than it is establishing an identity of its own, or being in any way like a movie version of The Hobbit. It rides the Lord of the Rings coattails like a two-year-old looking for a fun and easy ride. For those of you who have never read it, The Hobbit was a story of a seemingly small creature who learns that the world is much bigger than he realized, and so was he. This movie is about Bilbo being present for a few events while we are constantly reminded that The Lord of the Rings is about to be happening. This is made perfectly clear in the beginning of the film, and I don't mean the utterly pointless cold opening that sheds light on nothing, fuck that opening. I'm talking about the first encounter with Beorn. This whole thing was my favorite part of the book. Bayorn was somewhat standoffish in the novel, but the point of his part in the book is that we saw how the characters earned his hospitality and calmed the beast within. Here they meet him, he says what his backstory is, quips that he doesn't like dwarves but he likes orcs even less, and lets them stay there. Who cares? A meaningful part of the book was stripped of its relevance and dumped into the film to make the plot longer. And fuck me, get used to that. They have the moment where Bilbo saves the dwarves from the spiders, but they never establish what the experience was like for him. Instead, we see it happen, and then we see Bilbo struggle with being influenced by the ring, which was not in any way a part of the Hobbit story. Then Bilbo's experience and growth is kicked out the door of this giant moving car to make way for fucking Legolas. Fuck you! We don't need Legolas in this movie. He's just there because he was popular. If you as a filmmaker want to do something cute like having Rapunzel walking around in the crowds of Frozen, that's fine. That's actually kind of awesome. But don't insert a character into the actual story just because you think I'm going to spray my pants at the sight of his very presence. This scene is basically going, Hey look, Lord of the Rings fan, it's Legolas! It's Legolas! He's here, he's here, he's doing that jumping around stuff! He's here, he's here, he's here! Isn't it so awesome? Fuck you! The problem, aside from insulting the audience's intelligence and priorities, is that this isn't Legolas. Neither in the books nor the movies was Legolas a bastard. He said almost nothing about his dislike of dwarves, and he didn't act like he hated dwarves at all. That was all subtly implied in his character, which is why he and Gimli's evolving friendship was so natural. We didn't need to have him say things like this. Who is this? Your brother? That is my wife. And what is this horrid creature? A goblin mutant. Just give him a mustache, for fuck's sake, if you're going to be this fucking obvious about it. Oh, and by the way, Peter Jackson, I never dreamed in a million years that I would ever have to have this conversation with you, but we need to talk about this. What is this horrid creature? A goblin mutant. That's my wee lad, Gimli. Mr. Jackson. Do you really think so little of your audience that you would put something like this in your film? 
Do you really think that your audience is just a bunch of mouth-breathing, easily pleased, fan butt boy morons who will clap their hands like a circus seal and go the whole, the whole, the whole at the slightest mention of something in the other films? Fuck you. It's just so obvious and meaningless and pandering. They put Legolas in the film to have Legolas in the film. They made mention of Gimli to make mention of Gimli, even though that guy didn't say his wife's name, but of course he said Gimli because fuck you. And then they said, well, we couldn't work Aragorn into the film, but don't worry, every other male character is Aragorn. And then they went ahead and added a new character for I have no fucking idea what. Understand, viewers, my problem is not that Peter Jackson is making changes to the books. He made tons of changes in the Lord of the Rings films, some of which worked, some of which didn't, and some of which were somewhere in the middle. On the one hand, Theoden being Saromonically possessed was just kind of weird, but on the other hand, making Faramir ever desire to take the ring absolutely killed the point of his character. But then, on the other hand, giving Arwen a bigger part made the love story between her and Aragorn resonate more, but on the other hand, turning the ghosts into an invincible army in the end makes the ending a bit silly. For fuck's sake, send these things to Mordor before you set them free if they can't be hurt or influenced. What the fuck? But on the other hand, thank god Peter Jackson removed that piss-awful Saruman taking over the Shire in the end, which Tolkien never should have done in the first place. So, I'm kind of all over the map on those changes, but whether they worked for me or not, it was always clear that they were made for the sake of the story in some way, either to up the drama or as a problem solver. These changes are due to Peter Jackson telling the wrong story. Carol Marcus here, and by that I mean the open quotes character open quotes from Into Darkness, irrelevance her way around the spiders and captures the dwarves along with Legolas. And then after the dwarves are captured, we're supposed to believe that she and Mitchell are falling in love because they make stupid, childish, winky glances at one another. Well, thank you, fucking Nala. God, was this badly done. I mean, come on! Who cares about these two? Mitchell is basically just a stand-in for Merry and Pippin in these movies anyway, and Tauriel is basically one of those mannequins you see in shopping malls that look like they're alive but never seem to actually breathe. You probably think I'm being hyperbolic, that this in fact is in service to a story in some way, but may I divert your attention to this? after the big stupid battle where Mitchell is hurt and an orc is captured. The young one, the black-haired archer, we stuck him with a mortal shaft. The poison's in his blood. He'll be choking on it soon. Why would he tell her that? Why would he tell anyone that? He doesn't magically know that these two specific characters have a love interest. I mean, come on, who's writing this shit? Peter Jackson, I would not expect this from you. So we're finally introduced to Thranduil in this movie, who kind of reminds me of Nicky from Big Love, and he was fine, but the rest of the film has far more to do with these elf characters, the pointless stupid human city characters, with what Gandalf is doing, and with token nods and winks to the other films than it does with itself. It's basically saying, yeah, The Hobbit is fine, I guess, but look, here's some stuff like Lord of the Rings, with drawn-out battles, overwhelming odds, character arcs, branching storylines, and over-the-top fights that look completely ridiculous in this context. The problem is that the reason those things worked in The Lord of the Rings is because that was a much bigger story. This story is unnecessarily big. It's trying to be just as big, and it comes off as bloated, padded, and totally unnecessary. But let's get to one of the main reasons I think a lot of people were excited about this film, and that is Smog. Man oh man did they build up his introduction. Now, before I go any further, let me answer the looming question I'm sure a lot of people have on their minds. How did I think Benedict Cumberbatch did as the voice of Smog? Well, he was good. In fact, this is one aspect of his acting abilities that I will give him credit for. The man knows how to deliver dialogue like nobody's business. In Sherlock, he's got this down to an art. So he did a good job here. My problem with the Smog character is that he sucks. Specifically, my problem with the Smog character is this. I am fire. I am death. 
Smog, you are bullshit. You couldn't kill a room full of dwarves when you had one standing on your motherfucking mouth. Congratulations, Desolation of Smog. You officially broke Attack of the Clones finale's record for being a video game that I cannot play. Not only is every action and layout of the room designed for the dwarves to win no matter stupid what, but it would be no exaggeration or hyperbole if you gave Smog a life bar in this scene, because this is a video game boss. He moseys around, pathetically waiting for the dwarves to take action against him before delivering his weakest and most useless attacks, only using fire when it will benefit the dwarves because the programmers realize that Smog simply dominating the whole fight like he would have isn't fair on the player. Except this isn't a video game, you morons! It's a film! There is a reason the dwarves never engaged Smog in the book, because if they did, they would fucking die. There's nothing dynamic or engaging about this scene. Anyone who has read the books already knows nothing is going to be resolved here, so the fight is pointless for them, and those who haven't read the books probably do think this is the final showdown, so when Smog just leaves in the end, they're probably going to be asking what the fuck they had to sit through this whole thing for in the first place. This movie doesn't have time to be The Hobbit. It doesn't have the patience to tell you what Bilbo's story actually was because it's too busy pretending that The Hobbit was a much bigger story than it actually was. It wasn't. And after all this noise and clutter was over, I actually asked myself what Bilbo's experience was after all of this. And I still don't know. We see him do things, but we never feel like he's grown or exceeded himself in any way. It's all such a passive showcase of fan service, fluff, and nonsense, a pointless tour through films that were great, but this one just wants to remind you of how great those films were instead of making itself good. And I don't expect this to be the best film ever made because, first of all, that movie's already been made, and second of all, The Hobbit is a quaint story. It is not blockbuster material at all, but that's okay. They could have just made this one good. A good Hobbit film would have been enough. But this new franchise doesn't want to be a Hobbit film. It wants to be a prologue movie to the Lord of the Rings films. And at best, I'm not interested, and at worst, Go fuck yourself.